It's 12.45 and uh, we're back for our fourth session of today. Uh, good to still have you on board. Um, you're still on the screens, that's nice to see. Or you uh, just joined, then welcome to Startup Night 2021. Um, we've heard a lot of topics that have been revolving around hard startup and funding facts. And uh, let's move away from this for a moment and look at a topic that has um, become yeah, one of the major decisive factors um, on the one hand for customers, but as well as for employees um, in making a decision for or against the company. Um, it's diversity and in particular cultural diversity. So um, it's an overarching topic that has become more than prominent in society and business in the last couple of years. And in our next session, we'll get to know uh, what the benefits of cultural diversity are and why it is so necessarily needed right now in the tech industry. Um, and for that, I would love to, um, to join me on stage um, again from Hubraum. Um, the session will be presented to you by um, Omiros Grigoreas, uh, the marketing manager from Hubraum. Please join me on stage. Fabian, how are you today? I'm great and really, really excited. Really excited? See, yes, the next 30 minutes will be awesome. Nice. So um, can you give us a little heads up on um, what exactly we can expect in the next 30 minutes? Definitely. So it's an interesting fact that for this case, um, for me personally, there are two things relevant to two hearts. On the one side, from the Hoopron perspective, we are, of course, dealing with startups in the tech industry. I think that's the obvious side. And the other one would be, like personally, I am also part of this um, tech or community because I'm a mentee myself and what that means and in general what Two Hearts can tell you about who they are, what they do and why cultural diversity is so important is why we have three awesome speakers today here. So you mentioned Two Hearts, this is going to be our guest today. Um, what do they do? What do they do? So they started in the beginning of this year and if I'm not mistaken, they had already more than 800 applications of people who want to join their community and they offer a mentoring program and the goal is to combine or to connect people with each other and as you will see it's not only about people being culturally diverse but there are also other um, important factors playing a, a role here and I think this mentoring program and this connecting people and helping to grow together and bring the tech industry to the next level is what they do and how they exactly do it that's of course something they have to tell you. <laughs> Obviously, so I can see your I can see your uh, passion for the topic. Um, what exactly drove you to uh, apply for uh, a mentorship at um, at Two Hearts? Yeah, so this happened actually by the end of last year, where I met one of the um, co-founders, and he will be on stage very soon as well, Min Sung, and um, he, with, together with the other um, co-founders, he told us about the mission of Two Hearts. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't want to spoil it too much. But I immediately, because of myself, of my, um, of my background and my immigration background, I felt immediately connected and applied. And I'm super glad to have him as a mentor today. Well, cool. Like uh, the circle closes. Um, we all meet here on the stage. So I leave this to you and uh, have fun with your session. You guys out there as well. Stay tuned uh, for Omi and uh, Two Hearts. Um, yeah. Nope. So, building tomorrow's tech society with cultural diversity. We grew up within at least two cultures. We know the clash of cultures. We've been there. We have two hearts, two souls, two cultures. Those are, among others, some of the quotes you can find if you look for the two hearts community online. And what they do, and why they're here today, that's something they're going to tell us. So please welcome on stage May, Ulrike, and Min Sung. And before we start diving into the topic, it would be great if you could just briefly introduce yourselves, who you are and what you do, within two hearts and not within two hearts. May, do you want to start? Sure. Um, hi, I'm, I'm May. Um, I'm an investment manager at Project A Ventures, which is an early stage venture capital fund headquartered in Berlin, but also with offices in London. Um, I'm born and raised in Frankfurt, uh, but spend a lot of my time uh, also in the UK, but my parents are actually both from Turkey, so guest worker child, basically. Cool, thank you. Ulrike, what about you? 
Yeah, I'm leading Denso in Germany and DACH. Um, Denso is a marketing services and digital transformation group. We are one of the globally biggest ones uh, with the Japanese shareholders. Um, I lead 3,000 people in six countries, 60 nationalities, so a quite diverse group. Awesome. Curious to hear more later. Min Sung, what about you? Yes, uh, my name is Min Sung Kim. Uh, I don't look like it, but I'm actually German. Um, my parents are from South Korea. I was born in Hamburg. Um, I'm a managing partner at Digital Health Ventures, which is a specialized venture capital fund uh, based in Berlin in what the name says already in digital health. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thank you for your introduction. Min Sung, I would like to stick with you for the first question. So can you please tell us more about Two Hearts since you are one of the four co-founders? So when exactly did it start? How did it happen? And what is the goal of this community? Well, first of all, the goal is actually to empower young talent with migration background um, to enrich Europe's tech economy. Mm -hmm. um, so let's put it that way. There are, like for me, for instance, um, when I was young, um, I, was, uh, I was always looking out for mentors because my parents, they taught me how to work hard, how to work long hours um, to endure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but what they didn't, uh, t uh, taught me was basically how to get access, um, how to rise above the ranks, um, how to how to be maybe I don't know um, how to play the political game. I mean, I was in uh, in in, co in corporate funds like Allianz X and uh, Samsung Catalyst Fund, um, and it was uh, a different different game there. Yeah? You could not compensate everything with with hard work. Um, so basically, give these young people in the in I mean, for instance, 2014, yeah, and there we won the soccer cup, and it was good to see that the German t national soccer team had uh, guys like Boateng in the in the in the uh, in defense and strikers like Miroslav Klose that were. Um, where, where the, the parents did not come from, from, from Germany. Yeah? So basically enriching and making Germany more competitive. And this is something that lags a little bit, the perception, public perception lags in, in the economy. So when we have like Uhur, uh, the CEO of Biontech, he, he was a second or third gen, gen, uh, generation um, uh, uh, German. He actually put us with, with Biontech, he put us right back in, uh, in terms of license uh, uh, um, uh, competitively back on the map. Uh, mm -hmm. And so this is something when we know that there are a lot of like people out there in the second and third generation in Germany that want to contribute something to the German or the European tech economy. And that's why we have great mentors and ambassadors like Ulrike that are helping these uh, young people to achieve this goal. Okay, so you mentioned mentors and young people and you mentioned second and third generation. And without wanting to attack you, Ulrike, but Ulrike Handel is not the most exotic name on this planet. So how come you are part of this community? And maybe this will also give us an implication of who can be, be part of it. Yeah, I'm connected with one of the co-founders and saw what incredible idea was rising. And um, yeah, you are right. I'm 100% German. I have no Im immigration background, but... Uh, 30 years ago, I moved from the south of Germany to the north of Germany, and that felt really like an immigration coming to a new country. Uh, I had a, a slightly um, funny dialect, was not able to talk in high German. So this was my very first cultural um, experience. And today, leading uh, more than 60 nationalities, also um, having a kind of an inclusive atmosphere in our company and knowing that we are just being successful if we really embrace diversity and having an Asian chief of staff, I wanted immediately to be part of this community, of this movement and of this group, and also share my experience, mentor people, and show them um, how they can get along, exactly what you said, Min Sung. So this answer actually leads to the next question. You mentioned there are also cultures within one country, but let's maybe talk about, again, not specifically about cultures immediately, but about diversity, because this is a term which has been recently or is still being used so frequently, and I think it's important for the audience to understand what is actually diversity, how can you define it? Are there maybe even different dimensions? Ulrike, would you like to take this? Yeah, and it's, it's a very fancy um, word also in the current leadership discussion. I mean, everybody talks about diversity, um, even if they don't believe in it. Um, for me, leading 3,000 people, different nationalities, diversity is crucial for the success. And I think also the composition of the teams, the diverse composition of the teams, is really the base for being really successful and also have a, um, yeah, a guarantee a fun place of work. So diversity for me 
is manifold. It's men, women, introvert, extroverts, being different nationalities, different social backgrounds, different skills, Coke Zero, um, Coke Light, whatever kind of diversity, South German, um, North German. I have people in the western part of Switzerland and in the eastern part of Switzerland. They are so totally different, different mentalities. If you really want to grow as a global company, you need to embrace all kind of cultures and mentalities and be open and try to foster an inclusive atmosphere. So here is the corporate animal talking, but I think that's very, very important also in smaller companies, just to be open to other cultures and to other people. Anything to add? Nay, Min Sung? Yeah, I would totally agree with that. I mean, cultural diversity or diversity in general could be, is definitely manifold. It could be gender diversity, um, nationality. I think another thing that becomes also quite obvious in our industry is kind of the, the in terms of skill set, maybe like university backgrounds, what they studied, um, uh, and, and, and kind of the, the different paths people have t taken in the past that then, for example, leads them into the tech industry. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's hard to define, but it's manifold for sure. Okay, then I would like to ask uh, two questions at once, if that's okay. Because we now know that obviously there are different dimensions of diversity and we're focusing on one, on cultural diversity. So the question would be, why did you choose for Two Hearts cultural diversity? So how come? how come it actually was um, founded? And how come you actually started investing your free time in such a big project? Because I assume your jobs are not um, too boring. So how come you started bringing this super high motivation to build something from the scratch in your free time? I mean, Sung, maybe as a co-founder, you would like to start with this. Well, I think like you know, one one of the interesting uh, stories that I have from from the United States was basically you know um, a guy he he looked European. He asked me like, "Hey, um, where are you from? Are you from Asia?" And I'm like, mm, "Yeah, uh, where? But you must be from Europe, right?" And he's like, "No, I'm from China." And I'm like, "He he doesn't look Chinese. You don't look like Ch like a Chinese person." And he asked me like, "Where are you from?" And I said, I'm from Germany. And then he's like, yeah, you don't look like a typical German. So there are a lot of people um, in, the, in the 800 applications, there are a lot of people um, that are basically in between chairs. Yeah? They don't know where they fit because when I go to Korea and I say like, hey, folks, I'm home, they are like, yeah, you're not Korean. You're mm -hmm. German to us. But when I come home uh, to Germany and I look into the mirror, I, I look into an Asian guy. Yeah, and so there are a lot of people like that that have basically the same feeling um, that are not home here 100%, but also not 100% home in where, where, where their parents are from. And so we're giving them kind of like a place, a tech community, like a, like a Slack community, uh, where they can actually exchange each other, yeah, help each other out. Um, I think, you know, when we talk about network, um, when, when we have these very good schools here, very good universities in Germany, you know, people can reach out to each other, say like, hey, I'm a, I also studied at that, that, that university. Yeah. Hey, let's have a coffee or let's talk. Usually all the people, they are like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, and with Two Hearts, we're building a, a new community uh, for people with migration background that have the same approach. You know, when they say, hey, we are from Two Hearts, um, do you have time for a coffee? People in our network tend to say, yes, let's meet up for a coffee. And this is so amazing because, you know, our, our, our parents taught us hard work again, you know, because that was their belief why they came to a country like Germany to basically earn money for the families or, or basically grant a better life for the, for the grandchildren and children. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we can contribute you know, towards the German and, and European tech economy. Our drive, you know, our hard work, the, the, the belief that hard work will us get us further. Uh, I think this is very, very beautiful and I think Ger Germany uh, and Europe can basically benefit from it. Yeah? So basically we are unlocking the power or the potential in the second and third generation um, to actually contribute towards the German economy. And I think this is very, very powerful. And that's why I think it's very critical these days um, to, and, and also like you know, when you think about the United States and China, what is the place of Europe? Yeah? This is mm -hmm. something that we can unlock to basically find, our, find a better position. So can you maybe tell us a bit more uh, on who actually can apply? Like, how does a typical Two Hearts member, maybe if as a mentee or a mentor, um, actually look like? Or what do you need to be part of this Two Hearts community? May. 
Generally within Two Hearts, it's a very open community. So we want to keep it very open. Anyone that's kind of interested in, 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 in this kind of cultural diverse community can definitely contribute in, in any possible way. Within the mentorship scheme, we have it somehow twofold. So we have a, within the mentors, for example, it's very experienced people from the tech community, former founders, investors, or people from, I don't know, partners at, at, at consultancy firms, et cetera, et cetera, that, that just want to basically contribute to the community and mm -hmm. uh, give access to themselves and their, their knowledge and their experience. Um, and then on the other side, on the mean tea side, we usually have uh, young professionals or people just out of university or people also sometimes with in, in university that are interested in the tech community that are just lacking this access. So mm -hmm. I guess that kind of goes back to what Min Sung said earlier. When we initially started with Two Hearts and kind of the initial conversations we had, it was full of those anecdotes, you know, where people just made very clear these the situation of being in between chairs. And I think there's so many people in Germany or generally in Europe that feel the same way. And oftentimes, the, especially within, within tech or like the tech ecosystem in Europe, the, the networks are pretty opaque and not easily accessible from people from the outside, especially if you haven't been to a particular business school or uh, come from a particular place in Germany, but are very talented and are driven as well. So the idea is basically to create a network where people that typically don't really have access just to, 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 to these people, these like senior people, to, for example, just have the, the opportunity to send them a Slack message and say, hey, can I ask you a question? Can I get your opinion on one particular thing. And I think that already is a huge leverage. And that's also why we decided to focus on cultural diversity, just because we kind of, as a relatively diverse group, right, have, a, have, have most of the leverage in that particular space. Cool. Maybe let's uh, tackle the title of this session, like why it leads to more success. Can you tell us more about maybe some evidence from your personal, private, or uh, professional lives that um, can prove that actually cultural diversity is leading to more success. Maybe Ulrike. So regarding studies, I think the topic is still undervalued. So there are much more st uh, gender cultural study, uh, gender diversity studies than di um, cultural diversity studies. But looking at simply my company, we are a people's business. We are growing like hell. So if we are not able to attract us cultural diverse people, we are just not growing. So that's just the, the corporate um, the corporate perspective. And if we are not able to integrate everybody to have a kind of an inclusive um, atmosphere, a good culture based on trust and respect, that's also a problem. On the other side, we are working for clients. Our clients have a cultural diverse um, leadership team also. So if we meet our clients and we come with just, let's say, white men um, in, the, in the 50s. And on the other side, they are young people with a diverse cultural background that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. So I think society is changing, and we also need to, to change. And I, I just can't let go this very, very valuable, um, let's say, the, the cultural um, talents. Because mostly, in my personal experience, um, and it's also the experience um, of, of one of my closest colleagues, my chief of staff, who has come from Vietnam. He is more clever than we all together, but he is very quiet. So we are always, always working um, to, to him to speak up, because mm -hmm. obviously, probably this might be an Asian mentality, not be so as loud as the others. So, and I really need to make sure, and I think we all need to make sure to, to bring all mentalities and also all nationalities together to be able to speak up and to really bring the value um, to the table. And that's my, my deepest interest also. I think like, you know, I mean, May, please feel free to jump in. Um, I think like when it comes to investment processes, when you invest into companies, everybody has a confirmation bias. Yeah? Everybody is more, let's say, um, making the decision with the help of their instinct and with, with their intuition. And this is how we function. Yeah? Um, and the thing is, like, because we have that confirmation bias, it's good to have a, a set of diverse people to make the right decision to, to get to the truth. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Is this a good investment or is it a bad investment for us? Yeah? I think this is something that is enhancing the investment decision in, in, in our ICs pretty, um, pretty much. 
totally agree with that. I think I think generally the more diverse opinions you have in a room on, for example, an investment case, the better usually the investment decision is because people have different experiences and you know have anecdotes and have have just seen different things. So it ultimately makes the investment decision better. I'm sure. Yeah, because different different arguments came to the table. Now, yeah? because mm. like uh, um, because we do. Uh, decide intuitively and try to rationalize it to convince the other people on, uh, around us uh, in the community. And I think this is something very, uh, very difficult to um, how to call that when you have like so many people that are like-minded in the in the they they agree on everything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's difficult to 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 get yeah to dig to the ground and actually find the truth. Is it a good or a bad investment? Okay, awesome. And this again leads to the next uh, important question. So now I think it's pretty obvious why it is important, but you know, in the end we need we need the deliverable. So what can we share with the audience? How can I actually foster cultural diversity as a startup, as a company? What can people do to set the focus on this topic? Let's talk maybe specifically about hiring, for example. Like, just assume the scenario, you have one job, and there are two or maybe even more candidates applying for the same job, and their profile is, let's say, 95, 98% super similar, and the only difference is maybe this diversity aspect. What do you do? Maybe yeah. I could start here. So um, I guess I guess previously stated before, the, the tech ecosystem, or just like startups and VCs, um, it's a bit of a bubble, right? So mm -hmm. it's very easy if you have an opening in any sort, it's very easy to, to tap into your existing network of people that you know, that fit the job description, that you can very easily hire, that will most likely mentally, and like from a, from a background perspective, will be very complementary to you. So it's very easy to do that. But um, I think it definitely starts with hiring, right? So for example, what we did at our company when we started hiring, we very consciously made the decision of where to hire. Mm, so okay. who gets to see the job posting if there's any? It's mm. very easy to say, okay, hey, do you know someone you know, who'd be interested in this position from someone that you have on, on WhatsApp, for example? We didn't do that, right? We added other like channels, other Slack communities, be it like women in VC Slack community, there is like Asian tech community in London where we checked different types of universities, especially kind of the ones that are more uh, like scientific universities uh, within Europe where we kind of created the job postings rather than just tapping into the existing network. And another thing that people have started doing is kind of when it comes to the, to the initial application process where you get all the CVs, kind of cancel the whole CV process. A few VCs that I've heard of, for example, they start with, um, the candidates only answering like short answer questions. So they get questions on investment decisions or markets, et cetera, and they're supposed to just rationalize things and give their opinion um, without stating what university they went, w went to, what name they have, where they come from, et cetera. And I think there's all these like little tools that you can use in the very early stages of the, of the hiring process in order to mitigate any kind of bias. It's really tough to say, but I have to interrupt you here because the time is already over, even though we could move on forever. So thank you for being here today. And to the audience, the only thing I can share would be, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to get in touch with the speakers, with Hoop Realm? Feel free to do so and share your opinion. Thank you for being here and hope thank to you. see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.